Today we will discuss about spherical equivalent and we will cover introduction why do we need spherical equivalent how does spherical equivalent work and example with ray diagram now let's start with introduction what is spherical equivalent correction of a spherical cylinder power with a spherical lens only is called spherical equivalent a spherical cylinder lens will correct for astigmatism along with myopia or hyperopia if it was necessary to correct a myopic or hyperopic person who also has astigmatism but there were no cylinder lens available then spherical equivalent will be the best option to correct this patient using only a spherical lens the formula to identify spherical equivalent is spherical power plus half of cylinder power let's start with an example if our spherical cylindrical power is minus 2 diopter spherical with minus 1 cylindrical power at 180 degree axis here our spherical power is minus 2 and half of the cylinder power is minus 0.5 so according to our formula it will be minus 2 plus minus 0.5 or minus 2 minus 0.5 final power will be minus 2.50 diopter spherical as a spherical equivalent now why do we need spherical equivalent few instruments that we use in our clinical practice don't have cylinder power in ips like slit lamp ophthalmoscope if the examiner is having spherical cylindrical power then either he or she has to wear the spectacle which is very uncomfortable while examining or can try with adjusting the power available in ips but the problem is that the ips of slit lamp or ophthalmoscope cylinder power is not available due to which the image will be distorted and patient may even misdiagnose in such case we can use spherical equivalent to examine the patient by adjusting spherical lens only another example is some patients are very sensitive to cylinder power even with minimum changes in the axis they can't tolerate in such patient we can prescribe spherical cylinder power in spherical equivalent format for spectacle and contact lens How does a spherical lens correct cylinder power without distortion or affecting the image quality? To understand the mechanism of spherical equivalent, first we need to know about Sturm's conoid and circle of least confusion. According to Sturm's conoid, if both meridian focus equally distant from retina, one in front and other behind the retina, then image formed in the retina won't be distorted. This condition is called circle of least confusion. Spherical equivalent does the same. It helps to focus both meridian equally distant from retina, one in front and other behind the retina. Now try to understand the mechanism of spherical equivalent with an example along with ray diagram. We will take the same example that we have solved in our first slide. Minus two diopter spherical along with minus one cylinder at one eighty degree axis. Now let's distribute this power meridian wise. The spherical power will be same in both meridian, vertical and horizontal. So the minus two diopter spherical will be in vertical meridian as well as in horizontal meridian. And along with it, we have minus one cylinder power also in one eighty degree axis. So the power will be in vertical meridian minus one. In the vertical meridian, we have total power minus three, and in horizontal meridian, we have total power minus two. Now if we draw a ray diagram how the light rays is focusing in front of retina then this is the focus point for vertical meridian with the power minus 3 diopter spherical and this is the focus point for horizontal meridian with the power minus 2 diopter spherical now the spherical equivalent power for minus 2 diopter spherical along with minus 1 cylinder at 180 degree axis is minus 2.5 diopter spherical now as we are giving minus 2.5 diopter spherical instead of minus 2 diopter spherical along with minus 1 cylinder at 180 degree axis let's see how much power left in vertical and horizontal meridian so in the vertical meridian minus 3 minus minus 2.5 or minus 3 plus 
or minus 0.5 dot per So this is the final power left in the vertical meridian. In the horizontal meridian, minus 2 minus minus 2.5 or minus 2 plus 2.5 or plus 0.5 diopter. So plus 0.5 diopter is left in horizontal meridian. Now if we draw a ray diagram how the light rays is focusing in front or behind the retina. Here the vertical meridian is focusing with minus 0.5 diopter spherical and here horizontal meridian is focusing with plus 0.5 diopter spherical. Both of these focusing point situated equally distance from the retina, one in front and other behind the retina. That's why it won't affect the image quality or image won't be distorted even if this patient is having spherocylindrical power.